Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe and explain the trend in first ionization energy across a period. Now we've already looked at ionization energy in the topic on atomic structure. In this video we're looking at ionization energy and the periodic table. I'm showing you the definition of first ionization energy here. The first ionization energy is the energy needed to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of atoms in their gaseous state to form one mole of one positive ions also in their gaseous state. I'm showing you this for magnesium. I'm taking one mole of magnesium atoms in their gaseous state. I'm then removing one electron from each atom to form one mole of one positive magnesium ions also in their gaseous state. The energy required to do this is the first ionization energy. I'm showing you here how the first ionization energy varies across period two. I've plotted the first ionization energy against the atomic number of each element. Remember that the atomic number tells us the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. As you can see, the first ionization energy tends to increase as we move across a period from left to right. Moving across a period, the positive charge in the nucleus increases as the number of protons increases. This increases the attraction between the nucleus and the electrons. Because of this, the atomic radius decreases across a period. Both the increased nuclear charge and the decreased atomic radius mean that the outer electrons are more attracted to the nucleus, and this causes the first ionization energy to increase across a period. Now in all of these elements, we're removing one electron from the second electron shell. This means that the shielding effect due to the inner electron shell is the same for each element. Now as you can see, boron and oxygen do not fit the pattern of increasing first ionization energy. To explain these, we need to look at the subshells involved. I'm showing you here the electron configurations of the second electron shell for lithium and beryllium. In both cases, we're removing one electron from the 2s subshell. However, in the case of boron, the outer electron is now in the 2p subshell. As we saw in the topic on atomic structure, the 2p subshell has a higher energy than the 2s subshell. This means that it takes less energy to remove the outer electron of boron compared to beryllium. And this is why boron has a lower first ionization energy than beryllium. Ionization energy continues to increase across carbon and nitrogen, but then falls again at oxygen. To explain this, we need to take a closer look at the 2p subshell. I'm showing you here the electrons in the orbitals of the 2p subshell for nitrogen and oxygen. In the case of nitrogen, each electron is in a separate 2p orbital. However, in the case of oxygen, we can see that one of the 2p orbitals contains a pair of electrons. These electrons repel each other. This means that it takes less energy to remove one of these electrons than if the electrons were in separate orbitals. So because of this, the first ionization energy of oxygen is less than nitrogen. We can see a similar pattern if we look at period three. Again, we see a general increase in the first ionization energy moving across the period from left to right. However, we see a decrease going from magnesium to aluminium and from phosphorus to sulfur. These are explained just as we did with period two. However, with period three, we're now looking at the third electron shell, not the second. In the next video, we look at the trend in ionization energy down a group. 